Good day, Excellency. Sir de Sade, to what do I owe the pleasure? It pains me to inform you that the heretics you seek have fled. Curse them! How could that possibly have happened? Alas, these renegades have found protection with the ambassador of the Bridge Alliance. I would not have been able to capture them without risking a diplomatic incident that my uncle would have condemned. The Bridge. I thought as much. Those heretics have turned to them. But I had hoped that you might intervene quickly enough to stop them. It is truly regrettable. We have nothing else to do but pray that the Luminous might shield us from their lies. How goes the conflict with the Bridge Alliance? Your territory is, alas, the only one that has been spared from the ravages of war on the continent. We fight on every front, without great success, one must say. But what other choice do we have? These so-called savants not only refuse the light, but are determined in their fight against it. And on Tirfredi? To my knowledge, no one has yet seen any serious fighting. The bridge have succeeded in provoking the natives there, and have their hands full keeping them at bay which leaves us greater latitude to settle peacefully and pursue our mission of conversion. What's your point of view on the relations between our two nations? As ambassador of Teleme, I can only rejoice at the mention of our commercial treaties. We appreciate as well the welcome that your uncle gave to our missionaries. Thanks to your support, more and more believers wander your lands. The congregation is our most precious ally. To be perfectly honest, we have only two complaints. That heresy is tolerated, and that your treaties with the Bridge Alliance are maintained. I must be going. Farewell, Excellency. May the light guide you, Dasade.
Good day, tavern keeper. Good day to you. What is your pleasure? With all these sailors coming and going, you must have heard some stories about Tear Right. Even stories that my heaviest drinkers would have trouble believing. They say that man trees live there. Dragons and gigantic creatures. Treasure abounds under every rock. And the source of eternal life is hidden somewhere there. <laughs> Last night, some noughts even told me they brought back one of those giant beasts into the port. Ah, but you know the kind. If you ask my opinion, the drink was fueling their imaginations. How is business going these days? It's picking up. We've not seen many new customers, but of late, things are looking better. The Malachor and the neighboring walls have dampened commerce. The epidemic still rages, but the possibility of finding a cure on that island has given people something to hope for. Now that we have a city there, quite a few seafarers come by to spend their wages. I'm looking for my cousin. His name is Constantine. I believe he was intent on celebrating his departure last night. There was indeed a party here last night, but it ended badly. Whatever do you mean? A brawl broke out. My tavern was shattered, and no one's paid for the damages. I'm sorry. Amongst the rebel rousers, did there happen to be a young man? 20 years of age, hair down to his neck, light brown, blue eyes, quite the talker. I don't believe it. Of course he was there. He's the man that started the fight. I hope you've come to reimburse me. Don't count on me to help you if that's not the case. <sighs> what kind of damage are we talking about exactly? A good half of my furniture was broken into firewood. I piled up the lot over there. Let me take a look. Perhaps it can be repaired. If you can fix it, I'd be obliged. If not, you'll need to pay. That's not a small sum. I need to think about my options. Oh, the father has forgotten to give his son his allowance, it would seem. I need to be off. Farewell. Goodbye. The furniture is in terrible condition. The fight must have been extremely violent. It looks as if it's fixable. I've seen worse. We'll need to build some metal dowels, but once done, we can make them like new. And there you have it. You'd never guess they were once broken. Well then, were you able to repair it all? Yes, just like new. Or nearly. That does indeed look like fine work. You know what you're doing. I would hope. Can you tell me where I can find my cousin now? <laughs> Your cousin is either a very bad joker or a right good fool. He went and insulted a band of ruffians from the lower boroughs. Dangerous fellows. They have a storehouse they operate out of a few streets from here. What kind of business do they run? Several, actually, and they're all illegal and profitable. But you didn't hear that from me. In any case, if you were set on recovering your cousin, I would hurry if I were you. They're not the tender salts. Thank you for the information. Off with ya. Get him out of whatever mess he's got himself into. Seemed like a courageous fellow. Who could down his pint? Anything else? I need to be off. Farewell. Goodbye.
if you had any idea who I am. Don't run up, imbeciles! I have a ship to catch! That vulture of a tavern master was right. It is Constantine's voice. It's coming from the floor above. It sounds as if he's locked up. And I have a feeling they're expecting company. Be careful. The slightest itchy word to these brutes will have them drawing blades to scratch it. Negotiation may be the solution. As you say, this breed of brutes won't spit on ransom money. What a waste. I'd rather sneak around them than give half a coin to these seedy fellows. It's not possible just now. It's blocked. Someone with deep pockets will show up sooner or later to liberate the rooster. He's making a great deal of noise. We could knock him out or gag him. I don't have the key. This has been monumentous, gentlemen, but I have more important things to attend to. An island to govern, treaties to sign, riches to expedite, and a demanding father to impress! Constantine, it's me! My dear cousin! <laughs> my lucky star! Always there to pull me out of my fires. I'll do what I can. We're departing soon. Your father wasn't pleased by your absence this morning. Have you ever seen him happy about anything when it comes to me? You know what he thinks of me. He cares about you. I know that. 
He appointed you governor, didn't he? He is ridding himself of a source of constant disappointment. <sighs> Enough said. Today we set sail for adventure. If you only knew how these river scum treated me. Do me a courtesy, good cousin. Now that we stand boldly alongside the brave Kurt, let's give them their money's worth. They haven't spotted us. We could sneak out of here silently. We have a ship to board. You've always been the reasonable soul. Don't you think these brutes deserve a punishment? Yes, without a doubt. But don't you think there are more pressing matters? Kurt, it is your highness's decision to make. Whatever it is, I shall follow.
so. Constantine d'Orsay, future governor of Tier Freddy. I'm enchanted, Captain. I am eager to board your ship. Enchanted as well, Your Highness. I hope you enjoy your voyage. Are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set sail with the tide, as agreed upon. I'm still without news of my cabin, boy. But we will have to do without. When did you see your cabin boy for the last time? It's been two days since I've had any news at all. It wasn't out of the ordinary until this morning. My men have free shore leave when we're at dock. But the day of departure, every able-bodied sailor must be present on the ship. When did you see your cabin boy for the last time? It's been two days since I've had any news at all. It wasn't out of the ordinary until the... But the day of departure... Does the boy know anyone in Serene? Other than fellow Nords, you mean? I don't think so, but it's difficult to be sure. This Jonas, does he have any close friends amongst the crew? In tradition, we are all members of the same family. But yes, there would be Flavio and Lauro. Might I have a word with them? As you wish. You'll find them over there, in port. Be back soon, Captain. Good day. Someone told me that you're a friend of Jonas's, the young cabin boy who's gone missing. That's right, yeah. Are you looking for him? Yes. Your captain asked me to go and find him. Happy to hear he's taken the disappearance seriously. What can I do for you? What do you think about Captain Vasco? He's a damn good navigator and an excellent leader of men. He knows his craft well, in spite of being so young. How old is he? He's not seen his 25th year yet. If he keeps it up, he'll be an admiral one day. When did you last see him? Two days ago, in the evening. We went to have a drink in the tavern. Jonas, Lauro and myself. Did anything seem out of the ordinary? Was he troubled? Maybe a tad troubled. Like he was somewhere else. Why would that be? Give me your best guess. Boy, I haven't the faintest idea. Does he know anyone in Serene? No one, far as I know. Do you think he could have made himself any enemies? I wouldn't think that for a moment. Jonas has a good heart and he steers clear of trouble and troublemakers. I need to be going. Farewell. Day, sailor. I've been told that you know the missing cabin boy well. Is that right? You talking about Jonas? You bet your stars I know him. But like I've been crying to the nine deaf winds, he didn't go missing, he was taken. What do you think about Captain Vasco? He's a just man who knows his knots. He's well appreciated by the crew. It's a pity that he has a much heart for lass now and again. Always seems unhappy, our captain. Why would anyone want to snatch a mere cabin boy? How would I know? Jonas is a gentle boy who keeps his head down. <sighs> you think my story is nothing but mess too, don't you? It's just that I can't imagine a gang of thugs hoping to get a ransom for a cabin boy. Were you a witness to the event? Yes, I was. Even though I'd had a few tumblers in the belly, I hadn't yet lost my head. The other day, in the tavern, 
I saw him talking to a well-dressed man, surrounded by some other sly ruffians. And then when we left, him and I, Flavia left a little earlier, you understand? Well, those brutes were there, waiting for him. They just up and took him like that. Grabbed his arms and puff. Gone. Vanished. Why didn't you intervene? <sighs> I tried to, believe me. But my legs betrayed me. Wavering they were. And I fell into the gutter. Did you report this to the captain? Unfortunately not. I know all too well what weight my words carry. Even Flavia treated me like a drunken fool. And the captain? No, not telling him that. I still have some pride left, you get me? Did Jonas seem troubled to you, the night he disappeared? Maybe. For sure he wasn't his usual self. Do you know what was on his mind? No. No idea. Did anyone else see the kidnapping? There was still a small crowd in the tavern. But outside, I seem to recall that regular being there. We play cards with him from time to time. The kind of fellow who plays from morning to night time to be that skilled. But now and again he comes out. When nature calls, you know. I kind of remember his face being there. Thank you, Lara. I need to be going. Could I trouble you again? Have you found Jonas? Not yet, but I haven't given up. About that. When did you last see him? Two days ago, in the evening. Did anything seem out of... Maybe a tad troubled. Why would that be? Boy, I have... What does Jonas do in his free time, when you're on land? He just hangs around here or there. You know the cabin boys don't have half a sailor's wages. And when evening comes, we usually go down the tavern with good old Lauro. Did he ever have one too many? Never. He sips his point like it was bad medicine. One drink lasts him the whole night. I don't know where to start with this. Do you have any idea? No. Lauro won't stop telling anyone who will lend him an ear that the boy was carried off by thugs. And you don't believe him? I like Lauro, don't get me wrong, he's like a brother. But to be honest, he drinks a little more than he should. The itch for a drink gets us all, but to him more than others, and when you drink too much, the imagination wanders. Here, yesterday, it was me who tied one over, and I thought I heard Jonas's voice by the canal. I called back to him, as you'd guessed, but then nothing. Drink. It blurs the senses. I need to be going. Farewell. Strange story, this is. Something isn't right here, I can feel it. We need to lift a veil on this. Tavern Keeper. I see you're back. Can I pour you something this time? Someone told me about one of your faithful clients. A big gambler, it would seem. I see. An able-bodied man. Passes his time lightening the pouches of sailors coming through. Where might I find him at this time? Here. He would never give away his chair at his table. I'm looking for a nought. A young cabin boy who's been missing roll call for two days now. A nought, you say? That's not a lot to go on. There are quite a few that come to Mart's Haven. According to one of his fellows, he would have been taken right here. A kidnapping? In my establishment? You surely jest. At least I hope you do. I would have noticed. That doesn't hold water. Anything else? I need to be off. Farewell. Goodbye. Who are you? I don't recognize you. Am I in your debt? No. 
Have no fear about that. It's for a different reason that I am here. I'm looking for a nought that disappeared two days ago, after visiting this establishment. A young cabin boy. Two members of his crew. Yes, that does ring a bell. Tell me what happened that evening. A rich merchant came in, with a band of strong arms. The kind of men you can round up for a few coins, if you catch my drift. They exchanged words with the cabin boy. The kid was defensive, not sitting pretty. And then they finally left. And after that? It just so happens that I did go out for a breather. I needed some fresh air. And I think I might well have seen those same men grab him. But that was none of my business. I wouldn't have thought that they were kidnapping him, if that's what it was. They weren't particularly rough with him. What can you tell me about the boy? How was he that night? He seemed rather nervous, as if he was worried about something. Didn't feel like playing that, I remember. And he must have been right to be nervous, if he's disappeared. Who was the rich merchant, do you think? A jilted lover? A moneylender? No, sir. You are in luck. It so happens that I know the man. It was Sir Fontaine, that merchant. Where can I find him? He has a house in the wealthy boroughs, just off the canal. A stone's throw from the Tulema embassy. Thank you. You've been immensely helpful. This man is completely owned by his love for the game. Do you think you can trust him? What would he gain from lying? I have no idea. But what would any wealthy merchant gain from holding a penniless child? Are your boots worn through? Is your hat out of style? Does your vest... Welcome! It's such a pleasure to see... Have you seen anything to your... Thank you for your visit. See you soon.
Might I help you, sir? I would like to have a word with Sir Fontaine. He is absent, but the lady of the house could certainly receive you. Enter, please. Oh, I know you. I've seen you at court. You are Lord de Sade. And to what do I owe the honor of your visit, Excellency? I would like to have a word with your husband. He is not here, but perhaps I could be of help. It concerns a delicate matter. We're looking for a missing cabin boy. According to witnesses, he had an argument with your husband before being taken. I see. I am afraid that you have been misled. You seem to have come to the wrong conclusion. The cabin boy you speak of was not taken. He has simply returned home. Excuse me, but I'm not sure I understand. Don't you see, Your Excellency? We got our son back. I am very surprised. Several witnesses confirmed that your son had a fight with your husband and that his men escorted him from the tavern using force. If he had joined your husband willingly... Witnesses? In a tavern? And you choose to believe these drunkards over a respectable family? These witnesses are all in agreement, and it's their testimonies that have led me to your doorstep. My son was probably shocked to have found us. My husband and the other men might have simply had to carry him. A gesture that your drunkards must have misunderstood. How did you find your son's trail? We have never stopped looking for him. We learned the new name they gave him, Jonas. My poor little Celestine. Then we learned the name of the ship he sailed on. No sooner had it docked in Serene than my husband had the crew watched closely, and we found him. Where might I find your son now? I cannot say, Excellency. You must understand why. Until the Noughts have set sail, we live in fear they will take him back from us. This pact? It sounds like some fear-inducing story. The Noughts wouldn't be the first to recruit through dubious means. Sir, are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set sail with the tide, as agreed upon. I'm still without news of my cabin boy, but we will have to do without. I spoke with a woman who told me she was the mother of the cabin boy. She claims that her son was taken from her. Taken? Her son is sea gifted. His parents were required to give him up to honor the terms of a contract. A contract? But what kind of contract are we speaking of? A commercial contract. In exchange for services rendered by the Nords, some families cede more than gold. In some cases, nations even trade some of their subjects before they're born. I wouldn't be able to tell you the condition of Jonas's contract. I didn't even know he was originally from Serene. But what I can tell you is the young man hasn't seen his parents since he was a small child. And ever since, he's been a naught. Our ships are his home. And we are his only family. Be back soon, Captain. You see anyone else who might be able to help us? Anyone who's not a naught? How I would like my father to be implicated in this sordid business. Our old teacher must surely know what's going on here. Let's go talk to him.
Your Highness, I'm happy to see you. Your absence this morning worried both your father and me. Come now, Sir de Corsillon. My father may have been angry, outraged, or disappointed, but he's never worried about me. I am sad to have caused you any worry, though. Would you believe that I was rotting away in a sinister jail, guarded by thugs ready to kill me? Though still seeing double from last night's drink, I was preparing an ingenious escape plan when... Ta-da! My dear cousin jumped up out of nowhere and saved me. I'm quite the fairy tale damsel in distress. You might have refrained from the company of bandits the night before such an important departure. Take away the risk and halve the pleasure, de Cossillon. It is the salt of life. Hmm. I fear that some of my teachings have been misunderstood. But you wanted to ask me something, de Sade? I've had a word with Lady Fontaine. You must know her, that rich family that lives near the docks. She told me a strange story about her son who was a cabin boy on our ship. She said that he was taken when he was a child due to some contract with the Nords. Who was a cabin boy? Do you mean he's no longer one? They took him back to bring him home. Well, that is very unpleasant news, de Sade. We need to do all we can to bring the boy back to his ship. Since time immemorial, there's always been a certain price to pay for the services of the Norts. Children born on their ships belong to them. It's the rule of the sea. But certain contracts are so important that they also require children to be offered in exchange. From time to time, the congregation has passed such a cord, and certain noble families had to give their children up. Are you telling me that the Fontaines lost their son because of some agreement signed between my uncle and the Nords? Um, no. That pact ended a long time ago. This cabin boy couldn't have been a part of that contract. But Sir Fontaine has made a fortune trading with the Alliance, uh, uh, via ships. Do you mean he would have offered up his own son in exchange for wealth? Well, he probably did it before the birth of the child, and regretted it afterwards. But that is of little importance. What counts most is that you bring the boy back to the Norts as quickly as possible. Breaking a contract with the seafarers has always cost us dearly. Our nation could feel it in its coffers. I will do my best. A father selling his own son for a few boat rides. For ugly, that is ugly. Lady Fontaine didn't seem to have any knowledge of that detail. That could be of use to us. Excuse me, madam, but I haven't quite finished my inquiry yet. If you would be so courteous, I would like you to leave. I have told you all that I have to say. Come on now, stop lying. Jonas was taken away by force against his will by armed men. <sighs> that is not true. Completely false. He... Enough! With every word, you are a step closer to a prison cell. Prison? But what would be the charges? Kidnapping. Whether Jonas is your son or not, he is a naught that you kidnapped and locked up. In the eyes of the prince, you have committed a crime that puts the interests of the congregation at great risk. I beg of you, Your Excellency. Have mercy on a poor mother who is looking only to recover her child. We didn't kidnap our own son. And if you need to speak with him to be convinced, please do. He's in our warehouse near the coin guard plaza next to the canal i am certain that once you have heard his account you will see the tragedy in our predicament and help us i regret threatening that woman you didn't have a choice she was lying and we need to find that boy
Oh my god. Oh, for an entire episode, I didn't hear my voice at all. I didn't check the volume. I've been speaking to the mic for an hour without a reason. Great. Here we are. Be careful. Fontaine won't be alone. He'll have his henchmen with him. A handful of underlings don't scare us away. Right, cousin? Let's just try to remain discreet. Well, technically, I make a big mistake without turning on the mic. So, a sincere apology, guys. Maybe this episode and that episode wasn't work either. There must be a way. Oh, right here. Family house. Sir Desade, what are you doing here? I've come looking for your son. The Noughts are worried about his disappearance. Uh, those Noughts took him from us, but now we've got him back, and he'll be staying with us. Would you be so kind as to hear what I have to say, Sir Fontaine? Hmm. Charisma. You've taken your son against his will and have him locked up like merchandise in a warehouse. Is that what you call being a good father? As if you would know what it is like to be a parent. You are wow. far too young to understand Fail. the way we feel. That was first. Again? I looked into the contract that binds you to the Nords. It was indeed you who ceded your son to them in exchange for help with your business with the bridge. It is... It is so. But that sort of contract is ignoble. I never would have signed it if I had known. You should have thought of that before. Breaking the contract could have regrettable consequences for the congregation. The prince will know how to negotiate with the Nords. If they take my son back, my wife will die of sadness. Her sadness will be all the more terrible if she learned of your role in the story, don't you think? You wouldn't dare tell her. I beg you. You're not leaving me with a choice. Very well. Take okay. the key and take him away. Cursed be the day I delivered my son unto the noughts. All children leave the nest one day or another, sir. Farewell. At least he see reason, though. I just hope he doesn't change his mind. Fighters are out of the way out here. What the? Two way? Oh, great. Wrong door. Wow, lock so it's it. locked. Who are you? My name is the Sade. I am legate of the congregation. Your captain has sent me to find you. And were you able to convince my... my father to allow me to go free? Yes. Even if I had to bend his arm a little. That doesn't surprise me. He seemed to have no intention of changing his mind. I feel more sorry for my mother. She seems so sweet and happy to see me. You don't seem to be all that close to your parents. I hadn't seen them since I was five years old. I barely remember them. They find me, capture me and lock me up in this warehouse. Hard to grow close after all that. My family is the Noughts. I am sorry for my parents, but that is the way of it now. Can I go home? Yes. You should still go and say farewell to your mother. Then find your way to the ship. I'll see you there. At least. We did the right thing. We did the right thing. Let's just get out of here and go. He wear really cool clothes and armor too, bro. That's it. That's every quest I could do. Sir, are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set my cabin boy, Jonas, is back on ship. I have you to thank, I imagine. 
You do. It's a rather sad affair, and though solved, leaves a broken family behind. All we can do is plot a course. No one tells the wind what to do. I do thank you. I didn't think you'd go to so much trouble for a cabin boy. Your actions bring you honor. Mm -hmm. Permission to board the ship. We are ready. Certainly. Mm. But keep in mind that we'll be at sea for several months. If you have any farewells to make or any final business to put into order, now is the time. I forgot about one more mission. You're quite right. I do have a thing or two to put in order. Then be quick with it. There isn't much time left before the tide rolls out. I was about to ask the help of our merchant. I have a favor to ask before we leave. I'm all ears. We would like to load some merchandise into your ship's hold. Impossible. You're too late for that. All merchandise must be registered at the Port Authority, and the formalities are long. So, unless you're asking me to turn smuggler and hide contraband on my vessel... I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> We're only talking about a few crates, after all. Well then, they'll have to wait. The next ship for New Serene leaves in a month. Hellfire! If that shipment doesn't leave today, the commander will have my hide. Captain! I understand your position, but isn't there some way we can get these crates on board? <sighs> Listen here. I haven't forgotten what you did for our Jonas. Yes. I would gladly do you the favor, but my quartermaster is more stubborn than the tide. He is convinced that thugs want to use our vessel to bring who knows what aboard. And because of that, he's placed guards to watch over the registered merchandise before they're loaded up. All that I can do for you is to write your crates into the ship's manifest. If you manage to get them into the warehouse, they'll find their way into the ship's hold. And with the manifest, the crazy Gustavo won't see nothing but smoke. Please try and avoid roughing up those brave guards. They are my fellow Norts, after all. Got it. Be back soon, Captain. Oh, great. Where exactly is it though? Clear. Oh. Great. I did that once already. I can't do that again. Ah oh, man. Same old mission, same old mission. <laughs> Great. If you wore a North uniform and you were able to keep your mark hidden from them, they might let us in. Unless we just offered. Hello? What can I do for you? We're the relay. You're dismissed. Finally! We were starting to grow moss. Courage, me hearties. The path is clear. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> I didn't expect this outfit helped me that much, though. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, I didn't speak the entire time, but now I did. That's kind of weird. Wait, where is the manifest? Clear, prepare a drink with the lit sleeping pill. Put an order port. Prepare a sl a ah, great. Inform the importer. What do you mean by that? Wait, 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 wait. Take everything. <laughs> mm. Captain, sir, we were given orders to wait here with the merchandise. The way is clear. It's time to get going. Do your best to be quick and quiet about it. You won't have much time to move it. Don't you be worrying now. We're off. The warehouse is at the end to the right there. You can't miss it. Move out. Quick steps. Yeah. I don't have to prepare a sleeping pill. Talk to the guard coin at the Virgil Barrack New Central. Wow, there's so many. Coin captain. Coin captain at the Central Barrack. Where? Bridge Alliance on your master family. Furna coin bar. Wait, didn't I have my mission too? Mm. 
and oh well. We have to go talk to him too, you know. Let's go. We run back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> we don't have a choice either, do we? Are your boots worn through? So you're back. Right then. What about our business? We can guarantee that your merchandise will leave with us. <sighs> Thank you, Your Excellency. And bravo, Kurt. The commander will be most pleased. The cargo shall make the voyage. But who will be at its reception once it's arrived? That shall be your next mission. Once you've reached New Serene, go and find the Quartermaster. He will give you new instructions. Until then. I wish you a safe and pleasant voyage, Your Excellency. Kurt, good luck. Nothing. Wow. He gave us absolutely nothing. No, I'm not gonna find his clothes. I'm just gonna go. That's enough. Well, it's been an hour already before the great departure. Before anything else, I guess I have to end it here, guys. It's too long. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.